Hello guys, welcome to my lecture. In this lecture today, I'm going to talk to you about basics of genetics for beginners. Let me first begin by the definition of genetics. Genetics is a branch of biology that is concerned with the study of genes, genetic variation, and heredity in organisms. So what is genetics? Basically, as the name suggests, it is the study of the genes and the genetic variation and heredity in organisms or individual. Okay, so this is the definition of genetics. Now, let me introduce you to another term, which is called trait. So what is a trait? A trait is a physical characteristics or attributes. So this trait can be the height of the person, color of the eye, color of the skin, or color of the hair, etc. If you have a look at this picture here, the picture of a beautiful girl, she has a black hair and brown skin. These are her traits. And she, she is short. She is short. This is also her trait. Okay? So what is a trait? A trait is nothing but simple physical characteristics or attributes of an organism or an individual. That is a trait. So for this girl here, her black hair, brown skin, and short height, these are some of the examples of her traits. Hereditary or genetic information is found in the DNA. The definition of the DNA I'll discuss you later. So now I want you to have a look at this picture here. This picture here shows the schematic representation of the cell. What is a cell? A cell is the smallest structural and functional unit of the organism. So in the center of the cell, we have something called the nucleus. And in the nucleus, chromosome is present. Okay, so chromosome is present in the nucleus of the cell. So I'm, now I'm going to talk to you about what is chromosome and what is DNA. So the DNA is the double helical structure like shown here in the picture, which is very, very long. So this DNA is coiled, super coiled around some proteins and it's it's and it's very 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 condensed and when it's a coiled and super coiled around some proteins and condensed it comes in the form of chromosome okay so what is a chromosome chromosome is a dna which has wrapped around some specific proteins coiled and super coiled and condensed to become the chromosome okay so why why there is a need for the dna to to become condensed because dna is long and double helical, double helical long structure like this, and it cannot fit in this small nucleus. Nucleus is very, very small. When the DNA is long like this, it cannot fit in this nucleus. Therefore, it has to wrap around some specific proteins and condense, become super coiled structure and condensed. Okay? And then only in the, in the form of chromosome, then only it can fit in the nucleus. Okay? The purpose of the chromosome is is because the DNA cannot fit as such, therefore it has to coil and super coil around some specific proteins to, to form a condensed structure, the chromosome like here, so that it can fit in the nucleus. So this is the definition of chromosome and the DNA. Okay, so now, now you know about the DNA and chromosome. So what is a gene? So it's shown by the box here, a gene is a a segment, a segment of the DNA which code for specific proteins which in turn express some specific traits that is called a gene. Not all parts of the DNA is coding. You know, some parts of the DNA is coding and making function, making proteins and expressing the, some specific traits while the remaining part of the DNA is non-coding. So like I said, the box on the DNA strand above is a special section. Why it's a special section? Because it codes for some protein which in turn express specific trait. Okay, that is a DN, that is a gene. So genes code for a specific protein that code for a specific traits. We human beings have two genes for every traits, two genes for every trait, or all genes comes in pair. Why it is so? Because we human beings have 23 pairs of chromosome. So one from father, one from the male gamete, and the other from mother or the female gamete. So 
So basically, we have in each pair, we have homologous chromosome. So what are these homologous chromosomes? Homologous chromosomes are the chromosomes which are similar in size and the structure, and they, they carry similar, gene, similar genes which code for similar proteins, which in turn express uh, similar traits. Okay, so these are homologous genes. So for example, in, in this chromosome here, let's say that this is the gene that, that codes for the protein which express height. And this also, this also is the gene, the gene that code for the protein which express height. In this chromosome, of this, this gene of this chromosome and this gene of this chromosome, both of these, they actually code for the specific trait height. Okay, so therefore, this, this gene is called an allele. And this one is also can, called an allele in a pair. Okay, so basically what is an allele? An allele is, a, is, is one gene in a pair. In a homologous chromosome so uh, one gene in a pair that is called allele which which code for the specific trait for example here i have said that this one and this one both of these they code for the protein which in turn expresses specific trait let's say that is height so therefore this is called an allele so what is an allele an allele is one gene in a pair so that is called an allele okay so i i repeat this is a very very important concept so what is an allele? We have a homologous chromosome, like I have shown here, and this, this, this gene and this gene, both of these, they code for the proteins, which in turn express similar traits, let's say that they are responsible for, for the height. So therefore, this one is called an allele, or, and also this one is called allele. So one gene in a pair, that is called allele. So these two chromosomes are homologous chromosomes, okay? So what is an allele? An allele is one gene in a pair ones in in a pair so good so now i want you to think like this okay in the nucleus we have the chromosomes what is chromosome chromosome is dna plus some specific proteins super condensed right so and then comes the dna okay because dna and in the dna this some segment of the dna or some specific segment or the part or the section of the dna is the gene and the gene actually in, in, in one gene in a pair that is called an allele. So I want you to think like uh, to think the concept of chromosome DNA gene and allele uh, in in the cons in, in the boxes shown here like this. Just think think like that. The big box is chromosome and smaller than that one is DNA. Smaller than that one is gene and and the the smallest one is an allele. Okay, just think like this. So more definition. What is a locus? I explained. I, expl I already explained what is a gene. A gene is a specific segment of a DNA. So uh, now I will explain what is a locus. A locus is a location of a gene on a chromosome. Let's say that this is a chromosome. Okay, this is a chromosome. These these two represent homologous chromosomes. So the location of a location of this gene for height. This is called locus. Okay, so what is the locus locus for this red gene? This location here on this chromosome, that is the locus. And the location for this green gene, which is the gene for seed shape. So what is the locus? The locus is the location, location here on this chromosome. That is the locus. So the locus is a specific location on a chromosome for a gene that express, of course, some proteins which in turn express some traits. Okay, so that is the locus. Locus is the name suggests a location of the gene on a chromosome. So, I will now discuss some more terminologies here. Let's say that capital T represents dominant gene for the trait tall and small t represents recessive gene for the trait short. Okay? So, what is a heterozygous organism? An individual or organism is said to be heterozygous for a given trait if one of the alleles is dominant while the other is recessive okay so for example capital t represents dominant allele and small t represents recessive allele if an organism has capital t and small t together so that kind of organism is called heterozygous organism okay so look at this picture here this is a homologous chromosome pair so if this is the capital t 
the, this is an allele this one is also an allele but if this one is capital T representing for the tall and if this one is small t for the short and this and if the organism has this, 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 this allele, this, this one, capital T and small t, so this actually is called heterozygous organism or individual. It's, an, it's for a given trait. For the height, they have tall and the short mixed together. Okay? So because capital T is the dominant allele, so because the capital T is the dominant allele, it will mask the expression of the protein coded by this allele okay so if this one is the capital t if this if this one is the small t so this capital t will mark the expression of the protein by small t hence the organism will be tall so the result of this the phenotype of this heterozygous organism will be tall because why it will be tall is because we have here one allele as the dominant capital t and this capital T, this dominant allele, will mask the expression of the recessive allele. Okay, the protein coded by the recessive allele, which in turn actually express the height. Okay, tall. So we will get the tall organism here. Why tall organism? Capital T will mask the expression of the small t. Okay. So now another important concept is homozygous. So what is homozygous organism? If an individual or organisms, if in an individual or organisms for the given trace, if both alleles are dominant, that is called homozygous dominant. For example, if in this, if in this case, in this example, if this one is also, this one is capital T, if this allele is capital T, dominant gene for the tallness, and this one is also capital T, this, this, this capital T, and this one is also capital T, then we will have the organism that will have both capital T, okay, in its genetic makeup. So then this kind of organism is called homozygous dominant because capital T represents dominant trait, which is tall. So we will have the tall organism as the phenotype, okay? So as a tall organism is the phenotype. Phenotype is the physical appearance, okay? Physical appearance. So we'll have the tall organisms. So another homozygous, another type of homozygous organism is called homozygous recessive so that is if an organism or individual for the given trace if both the alleles are recessive and that is called homozygous recessive for example if this is a small t and this one is a small t now in this case this allele will express the trait the short because small t is the recessive gene and that codes for this for the protein which will code for the short plant okay which will result in short plant so then we will have the short plant. So if both the alleles are also recessive, then like here, small t and small t, we will get the so short plant. The, the, the result of this will be that the phenotype of the plant will be the short. In homozygous recess recessive, the phenotype of the plant will be short. Why? Because both of the alleles are recessive and these recessive alleles are ex expressing for the trait shortness. Okay? So we'll have the short plant. Here, in heterozygous, heterozygous organism, we got the tall plant because we had one dominant allele and one dominant allele is enough to express the trait. It's, it's trait, so we will get the tall plant because it will mask the expression of the recessive allele. Here, in both the cases, we have both dominant, tall, tall, dominant allele, so we will get the tall plant. And here in this case, or homozygous recessive case, we have both um, recessive alleles, so the, the end result will be we will get the short plant in the phenotype of the plant will be short because both of these are recessive genes expressing for the short trait okay so this this is these are some definitions and now some more definitions genotype like i said earlier genetic makeup of an organism is called genotype it actually tells what types of genes are genes are found in the organism for example in heterozygous organism we have one dominant allele and one recessive allele okay so that is the genetic makeup of heterozygous organism in homozygous organism there can be two types of homozygous or there, there will be two types one is homozygous dominant in homozygous dominant organism we have we will have one dominant uh, both the dominant alleles okay so we'll have both dominant alleles genetically and in homozygous recessive organisms we will have both recessive alleles genetically Okay, so basically these different types of organisms, the genetic genotype is telling us what are the different types of gene, genes found in 
the organisms, the genetic makeup of the organism. So, what is a phenotype? Like I said earlier, phenotype is the physical appearance of an organism or an individual in heterozygous organism, capital T and a small t, because here we have the dominant allele. So, it will mask the expression of recessive allele. So, we will have the tall plant, okay? It will have the tall plant. So, this is the phenotype, tall plant. In case of homozygous dominant, where both alleles are dominant, capital T and small t, here also we will get the tall plant, and this tall plant is the phenotype of this homozygous dominant organism. A dominant plant, we can say even plant, because I am giving here the example of plant. In case of homozygous recessive, in case of homozygous recessive plant, we have both the recessive alleles, small t, small t, representing for short, so the phenotype of the plant will be the sh short, will be short. So phenotype is a physical appearance of an organism or an individual. I hope this video was helpful. I will come up with more videos on genetics. Thank you very much.